what's going on guys where i left off on this build is us putting the engine in and getting it started We're stuck in here again under the shop um you can see this new addition i have some hood uh hood vents not much more is really actually yeah a lot more has happened to this car so when we started it we got the car running to fill you in on what happened it um we started the car up we got it running drove it around and it made good power and when we got to the tuning process, we found this weird issue, same issue we're having before where in the high RPMs, um, the car would start to misfire. And the car doesn't feel like it's misfiring, but it thinks it's misfiring. And basically the car will shut down. Like it will go into a limp mode. And that kind of puts the whole tuning process on a hold. So we went through and we figured out that some of my valves when i did the whole when i rebuilt the engine i put the head from the previous engine onto this block it's the same block but i didn't touch the head uh, a lot of the valves were bent um so we had been running a bunch of bent valves so i took the time we took off the valves i upgraded to all mount tunes mrx valves their uh springs and every i think it's even retainers as well but springs for sure and then i went up to a v4 camshaft it has like a 284 duration on the exhaust i don't know it's all mount tune parts it's the whole mx mrx head so had that all assembled and here we are after some trouble we got the car started and it runs now um today we're in here diagnosing a fuel issue having weird fuel pressure issues but that's not what the video is about. I didn't want to create videos on all those problems until I knew what was wrong with them. I didn't want to just lead you into it and go, hey, I don't know what's wrong with my car. And then two months later, be like, oh, it's running again. I, I don't know. I want, to, I want to get the car dialed in so the next video you guys would see would be like ride-alongs and stuff like that. But today, what we're here doing is in that time when I was driving the car around and having the bent valves, I bought a cheap little eBay lip. Yeah. Um, it didn't last long. It, this wasn't actually from me hitting anything. It, it's from the bumper on the RS has this little plastic support on the bottom. I'll show you when we go over to look at the bumper now. And it, I guess it just, I got going too fast and it got down the highway and it caught too much pressure, pushed it down and it dragged the ground and destroyed my bumper and my front lip. Um, so today, <laughs> Since uh, I've been moving toward making this car into a a, a time attack or a, like a track car, we are going to be working on building our own custom front lip slash splitter, whatever you really want to call it. Um, it isn't going to be overly aggressive. Um, it's going to be relatively cheap, but I've been running the undershroud because it has just been in pieces from being pulled down and rubbing on the ground. So... I'm gonna basically make a new one where it directs more air into the intercooler, into the radiator. Yeah, I'm gonna make it a lot more sturdy. We're gonna make ours out of plywood. Um, this whole shop was built out of scrap plywood, so I can build that out of some scrap plywood. I think it's 5 8 inch, I don't, you'll see it. It's not It's not thick, it's sturdy enough. It's uh, the weather treated one, so once I paint it and everything, it'll look nice and it's gonna withstand. Um, it's not too heavy, it's super, relatively cheap because right now during these covid times wood's pretty expensive but it's relative i think it's like 40 bucks for the thing i bought or thing i grabbed i got it for free so um it's scrap wood but yeah we're gonna work on that i'm gonna just kind of show you my thought process show you how big of a splitter i'm making i'm gonna be modeling what the lip look like and we're gonna attach it um yeah i think it's gonna do a lot better it's gonna look a lot better and it's gonna perform for sure better than this little plastic lip that didn't really do anything. This is more of just for looks. There was also a bunch of um, comments about my dog in the last couple videos, the puppy. Yeah, this is him at a year old. Kona. <laughs> He's 145 pounds. Here's the bumper. I have it just laid out. I think this is a four by eight piece of plywood. Center this a little bit. Ugh. There we go. It's like a four by eight piece of plywood. Um, this is the part I was talking about that broke. All of that came out. This whole bottom piece came out. I have it just kind of, I don't want to move it because I, I guess I can show you. 
right here all this broke on both sides and this whole thing just kind of there it goes there we go see yeah it broke off it caught the ground right here and it broke i'm gonna start testing up start doing some sharpie lines and then figure it out from there thanks buddy so that's my line this side looks a little bit bigger than that side actually okay well, I gotta shave that side down a little bit then. But this is gonna be my rough cut line. Um, three inches out on that side, three inches out on this side, maintaining three all the way around it. Um, so that's what we'll start with. I'm leaving plenty of room back here so that I'll be able to go inward and cut out the inside right here for the wheel well, like cut holes for the wheel. And I'll be able to just kind of keep supporting it all the way back and basically hook it onto the subframe. But yeah, that's how we're looking so far. Now I just gotta find a circular saw to cut this thing out. So I got the overall design done. Uh, I chipped it right here. I kinda, I'm kinda gonna try to fix that with some something like some Bondo or some fiberglass. Um, also, I should note right now that this will probably cover it in one layer of fiberglass when I'm done. Uh, I'm just kinda doing a test run right now to see how I like it. But the one layer of fiberglass will help waterproof it and help kinda make it more durable. Um, but, so I have it all laid out. I have the corners cut. I'm gonna cut in here and cut out a spot for the wheel so the wheel has full articulation while maintaining this which will be the um like where the under skid panel will go here we go here's the finished product so right here i'm a little afraid to touch oh it looks like it's dry okay um so basically what i used are these brackets right here that go up into the crash bar up here uh, they're made from, I think, 18-gauge steel, something along those lines. So they are very sturdy. I used two on this side. I have a picture before I painted it. Uh, I'll probably throw up here of what it looked like. Um, but yeah, I just put these little through bolts through it. And actually, the bolts that I use have a flat head. So as you tighten them, there is no um, clearance on the bottom. For the back mounts, I doubt that you'll be able to see it. And actually, you can pretty well. Ah, right there. So basically, there's a cross member that goes across the entire bottom of the chassis. The original use of that cross member that has two bolts on this side, two bolts on the other side, is to hold up the carpet underplating that goes up underneath the car that catches all the fluids and everything. Um, so I just used that and I used little things that I guess it's in the, when you go to Home Depot, they're in the plumbing department that hold the PVC to the wall, like little pipe holders, like two bolts on this side and it kind of sandwiches over. I use that to kind of hold the plywood to it. Um, I just used three bolts again and yeah, so there was no welding. I'm almost said I didn't have to <laughs> pick up my welder at all during this whole process. It's all just a drill and some bolts. Going forward, I'll probably add some mounts that go up into maybe the crash bar or the frame that go to right here. Because on the corners, it's a little bit, I don't know how much you, it, it, there's a little bit of play. So I'll add one here to give that some, some support. I'll probably go through and actually attach the bumper to the splitter somehow. Right now, to just remove the splitter, you have to pull off the bumper and it's one, two bolts up front and two bolts in the back. And the whole entire splitter drops. And I kind of like how easy that is to remove. So I'll probably try to maintain that ease. If I put supports on the sides over here, I'm going to have to somehow make it removable. I don't know. That's for a future. That's for that's in a future endeavor. Um, and then for the future too, I'll probably add some type of support from here up to the crash bar just for the the lip. Even though it's pretty, it's pretty stout. I still want to make it just a little bit more. I mean those. I kind of like the way it looks with no flat, but I kind of want to add some more supports to it. This project took me about six or seven hours and was about 80 bucks worth of materials. So if you've made it this far, thank you for watching and let me know what mods I should do next. Um, hopefully soon I'll have a track video coming out of this car after. Oh, actually next video will probably be the synchro yeah i'm gonna be doing carbon synchros on this car so from next video will probably be that 
But after that, I hope to have a track video or some type of autocross video.